Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rabiul. I am an assistant professor of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Today's topic is CBC report interpretation or complete blood count report interpretation. This is a very important topic not only for your examination but also for your clinical life. Often CBC report is widely advised but under interpreted so proper understanding of this report may help us in proper diagnosis of the patient okay so let's begin now always remember a cbc report as we will see has three parameters so it will have some red cell parameters it will have some white cell parameters and it will have platelet parameters. So what will we see in the red cell parameters? They will include hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit, which is also known as packed cell volume. It will also include red blood cell count and the red cell indices. And we all know that the red cell indices will include mean corpuscular volume or MCV, mean corpuscular hemoglobin, mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration and red cell distribution white so we will talk about all these parameters now first i'm just giving you an introduction in the white cell parameters we will talk about total wbc count and differential count and in the platelet we we will mainly talk about the platelet count and mean platelet volume or mpv so let's start with the red cell parameters and the first parameter is hemoglobin concentration we can see the normal values for example in males the normal value is between 13 to 17 gram per deciliter and in adult females it is 12 to 15 gram per deciliter so these are the normal ranges in adults and i will also show you another slide you can pause this video and look into that slide and as we will see normal values differ according to the age so when the hemoglobin level is less than normal for the age it is considered anemia and when the hemoglobin concentration is higher than normal it can be due to polycythemia that is a condition where red cell count is markedly elevated and that is also reflected in the hemoglobin concentration or more commonly it can be due to dehydration or certain other conditions where the plasma volume has reduced and that is making the hemoglobin concentration higher but as we will see red blood cell count will not be higher than normal and this is also known as relative polycythemia now regarding the packed cell volume or pcv always remember that in adult males it is between 40 to 54 percent and in adult females it is between 36 to 48 percent and regarding the rbc or red blood cell count we can see that in adult males it is about 4.7 to 6.1 million per microliter and in adult females it is between 4.2 and 5.4 million per microliter and in polycythemia the count will be higher and the hemoglobin concentration will be also higher and there will be also in case of polycythemia vera some mutation so this is regarding the hemoglobin and red blood cell count and now we will move on to the most important red cell parameter that we have to understand and that is the red cell indices so the first one is mcv mean corpuscular volume what do we mean by this so it is the average volume of the red blood cells the normal range is between 80 to 100 femtoliters and when the red cells are smaller we will see a decrease in mcv so say for example if we see that in a patient the mcv is 68 what will that indicate it will indicate that 
the average volume of the red blood cells in that patient is less than normal so most of the cells are microcytic and what are the causes of such microcytosis it can be due to iron deficiency anemia it can be due to thalassemia so it is now pointing us to a direction but we have to advise further tests to confirm on the contrary when the MCV is higher than normal say for example if the MCV is 125 what will that indicate it will indicate that the average volume of the red blood cells are higher than normal that is most of the red blood cells are macrocytic and common causes will include vitamin b12 and folate deficiency it can also happen in certain liver diseases regarding mc8 that is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin normal level is 27 to 33 picogram and whenever mc8 is less than normal the red blood cells will appear hypochromic that is the central failure which is normally one third of the red blood cell it will be more so more area will be pale and less area will be red in the red blood cells and those red blood cells are considered hypochromic red blood cells and when mc8 is normal the red blood cells are usually normochromic that means one third the central one third of the red blood cells will appear pale and the outer two-third will remain red in color so mcv mc8 and now we we will talk about mchc that is the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration the normal value is between 32 and 36 gram per deciliter and often we have to consider these things in combination for example in iron deficiency anemia MCV, MCH, MCHC, all are reduced. Now, the last index that we will talk about is the red cell distribution white or RDW. This is often underinterpreted and overlooked, but this is very important because it gives us huge information. So what do we mean by this term RDW or red cell distribution white? It means uh, the average variation in the diameter of the red blood cells. So the normal range is between 11.5 11, 11 to 14.5 percent. In some labs it is 11 to 16 percent. And whenever it is more than the normal range, it is indicating that there is variation in the size of the red blood cells. That is also a term known as anisocytosis for example if we see that in a patient rdw is 24 that will include that there is marked variation in the diameter of the red blood cells if we do a blood smear of that patient we will see that some cells are small some cells are large and there is a huge variation in their diameter so that's why rdw is also important and like i have already mentioned that we have to consider these things in combination so now i will show you a slide where we can see various combinations between these indices for example if mean corpuscular volume is low and rdw is high that is a common finding in iron deficiency anemia in iron deficiency anemia we can see that due to deficiency of iron the red blood cells are not properly made so they are smaller and also they are hypochromic and also there is huge variation in their size so in iron deficiency anemia mean corpuscular volume will be low and rdw will be high now if mcv was low and rdw was normal that is a common thing we see in thalassemia trait if mcv is normal and red cell distribution wide is high it may indicate early nutritional deficiency and it may indicate mixed anemia 
Now, if both are high, for example, mean corpuscular volume is high and red cell distribution wide is also high, that may indicate vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. And if MCB is high but RDW is normal, that is the common finding we see in alcoholism and liver disease. So the point I'm trying to make here is regarding the red cell indices, we have to think of these things in combination to know about the diagnosis. And they will point us in the proper direction. For example, when we are suspecting iron deficiency anemia, we will advise serum iron profile. When we are suspecting thalassemia trait, we will advise hemoglobin electrophoresis. When we are suspecting vitamin B12 or folate deficiency, we will suggest assay to determine vitamin B12 and folate level in that patient. So now that we have talked about the red cell parameters, now let's talk about the white cell parameters and they will include total count and differential count. Now regarding total count, the normal range is between 4,000 to 11,000 per microliter. When it is more than normal, we call that leukocytosis and causes will include infection, inflammation, leukemia, etc. Now regarding leukemia, we will see that in leukemia, the total count of WBC will be very high. For example, 100,000 per microliter, 150,000 per microliter. So whenever we see such high count, we have to suspect leukemia and we have to advise further tests, for example, bone marrow examination. However, there is another term that is called leukemoid reaction, where WBC count is also high, for example, 50,000, but the patient does not have leukemia. So this is very important to differentiate between leukemoid reaction and leukemia. And in order to do that, we can first advise the patient to do a blood smear because if the peripheral blood film is examined, we can often get clues whether it is leukemoid reaction or it is leukemia. In leukemia, we may see plenty of blast cells if we are talking about acute leukemia. Now, when the WBC count is less than normal, it is known as leukopenia, and the causes will include bone marrow suppression, viral infection, etc. Now, this is very important, the differential count. In this image, we can see that in adults, neutrophils are the dominant white blood cell population. But I will now show you a slide where we can see that the differential count varies according to age. It is not the same in neonates, in children, in adolescent, and in adults. It is quite different, so we have to think about the age of the patient when we are looking at the differential count. For the adult, the predominant cell population is neutrophil. The normal range is 40 to 70 percent. And whenever it is higher than normal, it can indicate bacterial infection, stress, sepsis, etc. And whenever it is less than normal, it can be due to bone marrow separation, viral infections, etc. Regarding lymphocytes, their normal value in adults are between 20 to 40 percent, and it is increased in viral infection, in certain chronic infection like tuberculosis, in certain leukemia, it is very high. For example, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, the percentage is very high. Regarding monocytes, the normal value is between 2 to 10 percent, their differential count, and it is elevated in chronic inflammation. Now this is very important, eosinophils, the normal range is between 1 to 6 percent and it is commonly elevated in allergies and in parasitic infestation, particularly in helminthic infestation. So whenever we see a CBC report where eosinophil is high, we also advise that individual to do total IgE because that will also confirm whether the patient has allergy or not. 
and basophil these are very rare we rarely see basophil see normal blood smear however in certain myeloid proliferative disorder particularly in chronic myeloid leukemia we can see plenty of basophils actually cml or chronic myeloid leukemia slides are the slides where we can see basophils because in normal blood smears we hardly see any basophils their normal range is less than one percent so the last topic the last parameter is regarding platelet the normal range is 150,000 to 400,000 per microliter when it is less than normal the term is thrombocytopenia it can be seen in certain viral infection for example in dengue fever in bone marrow failure in ITP that is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura that is an autoimmune disease where antibodies are formed against the platelets and that results in destruction of those platelets and that will cause thrombocytopenia and one thing you have to remember when platelet counts become very low that can result in bleeding so that is very important to follow and what is thrombocytosis when there is increase in the platelet count above the normal range it can be reactive thrombocytosis that is happening in response to iron deficiency or in response to certain inflammation or it can be due to some primary myeloproliferative neoplasm and the last point that we will talk about is regarding the mean platelet volume just like the MCV that was mean corpuscular volume MPV mean platelet volume is the average volume of the platelets and the thing that we can know from this is if mean platelet volume is low that is indicating decreased production of the platelet and when mean platelet volumes are high that can indicate increased destruction of the platelets so this concludes our lecture on CBC report interpretation. I hope this lecture was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. In future, I will also upload lots of videos on peripheral blood smear. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.